Welcome to the Gifts for Glory podcast, where we celebrate and promote men and women using their gifts for God's glory. Know someone who is making an impact for God's kingdom using their gifts, talents, and passions? We'd love to meet them. Send us an email at podcast at giftsforglory.com. That's podcast at gifts, the number four, glory.com. And now here is our host, Dave Ebert. Hello, friends and neighbors. Welcome to this special edition of the Gifts for Glory podcast. Today is Monday, November 2nd, and in podcast norms, rules, and you know, procedures, kind of those unspoken rules, usually dating your podcast is a no-no. But today, because of the gravity of what is being decided uh, as of tomorrow, I wanted to insert my heart, and I hope that it speaks to some of my friends and neighbors. Given the nature of how 2020 has gone and how it could end, I wanted to use my platform here on the Gifts for Glory podcast as much as possible. So my commitment to you and to whomever needs it is that I'll be releasing new episodes each Monday morning through the end of February, at least. I want to share these incredible stories of hope and joy and God's grace and mercy and love. And I want to show this to be a part, as small as it may be, I want to be a part of the solution of getting hope out there. Hope is here. Hope is abundant. Hope is Jesus Christ. No matter how dark it is, the light of Christ is still burning bright. So join me these next 16 weeks, which will include all of January, which is actually, I'm going to do a special series dedicated just to comedy. Because let's face it, after this year, after tomorrow, the election is decided, we're going to need some hope and joy and laughter. And I've come across in my my travels and in our improv, I've really come across some amazing and amazingly funny people, which I'm going to bringing those people on throughout January to uh, tell some stories of hope and have some fun and have some laughter. So January is going to be a month dedicated exclusively to laughter and to comedy. So I hope that you will enjoy those interviews that are coming up in uh, January 2021, hoping to kick the new year off on a good note. So January will be filled with five episodes featuring some of the funniest people in God's kingdom. And I'm absolutely excited to share those with you as well as the other great guests we've got lined up for the rest of this year and on into 2021. Now, if you are enjoying these podcasts on the Gifts of Glory show, uh, please give us a like on our Facebook page or follow us on Instagram. Uh, We're at Gifts for Glory. That's at Gifts, the number four, Glory. And also leave a review for the show on whatever platform you're listening on. Uh, Let people know that you're enjoying it. Let people know what it's about. And the more that you review us and like us and share us, the more that people are going to find it and help us find people that maybe need to hear these stories of hope and of joy. Uh, so please like, follow, share, and review the Gifts for Glory podcast on whatever platform you're on. Uh, we definitely love and appreciate that. And uh, thank you uh, to everyone that has been supporting us, uh, whether it's through our Patreon page or just by liking and sharing us on social media. Now, let's get into this episode. Uh, this episode is one of those where I just want to share my heart. I've done it a few times, uh, especially recently here in 2020. Uh, normally, we do open with the Devotion with Dave segment and go right into an interview. However, today, I'm going to comment on the election. Note, I am not endorsing anyone. I will not use my platform to participate in the division and and get the hope message lost as we try to pick between two broken people. That's not what this is about. This is about endorsing Jesus Christ. This is about endorsing our Savior. So again, I'm not endorsing any candidate for president or any other office through this podcast. I'm only endorsing God through the Holy Spirit and the salvation only through Jesus Christ. But before I dive into that commentary about the election, here is our Devotions with Dave segment. Coming from Philippians chapter 4 verses 4 through 9 out of the NLT. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. 
Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. And I, this passage is so vital for right now because almost all of us who are, on, whether you're me and you're recording this podcast or you're listening to it, chances are you found out about it, learned about it through social media, or you spend a, a considerable time on social media. And when you're on social media as much as I am, or even half as much as I am, it's easy to see that there are a lot of people, even a lot of people who believe themselves to be Christians, who are participating in the divisiveness, in, in the anger, in the angst. They're not, as verse 4 tells us, they're not full of joy. And they're not full of joy in the Lord. Um, they're also not, as verse 8 tells us, uh, fixing their thoughts on what is tr true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Uh, think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. And I am also preaching to myself. There are times when I get so frustrated with with the COVID and with the election and with this and that, that sometimes I forget to filter my thoughts through that Philippians 4, 8 filter. So I just want to encourage you to really marinate on this passage, especially as we head into tomorrow's election and into the rest of the year and to what's assuredly going to be some more times of of challenge and tumult. So I hope that you will take Philippians 4, 4 through 9 to heart. Um, always, and there's no exception, always be full of joy. Now remember, joy is not an emotion like happiness. It can be fleeting and can come and go. Joy is deeper. Joy in the Lord. So always be full of joy in the Lord. I say again, rejoice. Let everyone See that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And verse 8, once again. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you have learned and received from me, everything you have heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. So, the two biggest things I want you to take away is... Number four, verse four, always be full of joy in the Lord. I say again, rejoice. And verse eight, filter your thoughts, filter your comments on social media, filter the way you talk to your brothers and sisters in Christ and your family members and friends and coworkers regarding anything in the news. Filter it through Philippians 4, 8. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely, and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. So that is our Devotions with Dave segment for uh, this episode. Uh, Philippians 4, verses 4 through 9. Uh, I read from the NLT translation. So let's go right into our commentary regarding the 2020 election. Uh, though the concepts expressed here are not concepts relegated only to an election cycle. I hope these ideas would stick with you and, and me as well, because again, I'm preaching to myself as much as anybody else. And I hope these ideas will stick with all of us in all of our travels and all of our trials. Tomorrow is the election day. Uh, many of you have voted early via early voting or mail-in voting. And this year, as cliche as it may sound, is a very important election. The importance is only outweighed by the animosity and division, even and dare I say, especially within the church. Recently, um, politics has come up in conversations, and, and when the, the election was discussed, there was more agreement over principles than there was disagreement. However, because of the animosity that's been fed into this political season, I 
the, the, it came to these like verbal blows and it got ugly and it got unfair and it was not Christ-like on either side. And my heart was torn because I refused to agree with my friend that one of the two was the devil incarnate and dared speak positively about him. I was not debating or speaking as a Christian uh, in that moment. And so here we were with two Christians, two pastors, and the enemy has us divided over broken, sinful people to the point that scripture is used out of context, defensive walls go up, and positions of physical dominance are taken. Where are we at, church? Where are we, church? These two men that are the primary front runners, they're broken, they're sinful, they're evil. And that's not my definition. That's Jesus in the Bible himself describing who we are as human beings. Now, these two men have become such idols for many within the church that we cannot rationally and true to the word debate about what is at stake. And why is that? Now, this podcast will not ever be political. I'm not going to use this platform. Again, I'm not going to endorse one man or one party over the other. I do honestly believe that there is good. There are good people on both sides, and there are bad people on both sides. There are good ideas and bad ideas. And I have my preferences, and my faith is leading me in a certain direction, but I'm not going to share what that conclusion is here on this podcast. What I will share is the importance of being kingdom-minded. Focus on the kingdom of God. Not so much that the kingdom of Biden or, or the kingdom of Trump or even the kingdom of America. Focus on the kingdom of God. Because here's the truth. One day, America will be gone. If you believe in the Bible, if you believe in the book of Revelation within the Bible, America is not going to be here forever. It's inevitable when the new earth and the new heavens and the new Jerusalem come to pass. The end times, the time of, of Jesus' triumphant return, will prove to us all how little eternal value, honestly, this country really has, or any country for that matter. This nation will pass away when Christ returns. Jesus and his kingdom are forever. That is where our eyes our minds, our hearts, our souls, and our words should be focused on that eternal kingdom. And making sure we, and everyone we can that, to bring with us, are there when those trumpets blow or when we are otherwise called home. So our focus should be on that eternal kingdom and making sure that we bring as many people with us when those trumpets blow or when we're called home. So let's let's be about our Father's business. Now in the meantime, yeah, I, I've caught flack and I've seen my words taken out of context, outright ignored, or completely misrepresented when I've said this before, but it doesn't matter. When you are kingdom-minded, when you are kingdom-minded, who wins this election, it doesn't matter. What matters is how you treated those who vote and think differently than you do. How did you love those with whom you disagree? How were you Jesus in those discussions? The Bible tells us the importance of living in peace with everyone. Peace is not the absence of conflict. Peace is living together, seeing each other as family in the kingdom of God, and not seeing each other as the enemy. Romans 12, uh, verses 17 and 19 tells us, Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Some very definitive language right there. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. And that's verse 18. Now, verse 19 in uh, Romans 12. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. So again, verse 18 is key here. Do all, not do most, do as much as you think you can, but do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Even, and probably most especially in, an election season. Even if you are anti-mask and they're pro-mask, even if they believe in complete and total isolation and you believe that we should open up and live life normally, do all, all that you can to live in peace with everyone. The writer of Hebrews reminds us, also in uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 14 and 15, work at living in peace with everyone. It doesn't say 
sit idly. It says work at living in peace with everyone and work at living a holy life. For those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. And the the church is not succeeding in, in many areas with these scriptures. Hebrews twelve fourteen and 15, one more time. Work at living in peace with everyone, and work at living a holy life. For those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. Let's say that one more time. Verse 15, look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Important sentence right here. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. When we argue and infight and treat one another as the enemy because of which sinner we choose to vote for, we set a bad witness and hurt the advancement of the kingdom. Our poor witness does more harm than any election possibly could. If you study the Old Testament, God's commands to the righteousness did not waver, nor did they go away because Israel had bad judges or kings. God didn't look down and say during the Old Testament days and say, well, my children, you have a bad leader and you need to replace him. So forget what I said for now. Live to win by any means necessary. Then when you have a better king, I'll be here waiting for you. Now to kind of steal from the Geico commercial, not a sponsor, by the way. That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. We must remember the admonition in Ephesians 6. And we hear it a lot, but let's marinate on this for for just a moment. Ephesians 6.12 tells us, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in heavenly places. Ephesians 6.12 For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. So the people that we disagree with, the people that we vehemently disagree with politically, emotionally, spiritually, whatever the case may be, whatever our disagreement may be, those people are not our enemies. Our enemies are in the unseen world, the mighty powers in this dark world, and in the evil spirits in the heavenly places. So if you are voting to reelect President Trump, remember, Biden's supporters are not your enemy, not in the kingdom of God. If you are voting to change the presidency to Vice President Biden, Trump supporters are not your enemy, not in the kingdom of God. If you're voting for a third party, none of the above are your enemy, nor are you theirs in the kingdom of God. And let's hear it one more time, Ephesians 6.12. Let this sit in your heart as we get ready for the election tomorrow and the inevitable arguments and, and potential court involvement in the results. Let's remember Ephesians 6.12. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. So let's take that to heart. Let's focus on that. The people that we vote against or the people that we vote for, the people that we disagree with or the people that we support, there's no enemies among any of that. The enemies are higher than that. We're people. We're all fallen. We're all broken. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned. All have sinned. There's no exception. The only exception got nailed to a tree 2,000 years ago for our benefit. For everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Everyone has sinned. We all fall short. 
There is no sinner that's better than any other sinner. There's no sinner that's worse than any other sinner. In God's economy, it's all the same, and it's all paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. The wages of sin is death. And there is no sin bigger than others. There is no sin smaller than others. All sin leads to death. And the death can either be us, or it can be the death that is already paid by Jesus Christ. That's it. Our enemies are not each other. So as we get closer and closer to Christ's return, we must hold tightly to his promises, and we must prepare to do the battle and do our part. Now, let's be clear. Jesus won the war. He's given us the victory. But we still have work to do. We aren't to do this work alone, either. God gave us the equipment we needed to fight and win. And again, in Ephesians 6.12, remember, our enemies are not Democrats. They're not Republicans. They're not Libertarians. They're not Antifa. They're not Black Lives Matters. They're not the Proud Boys. They're not the KKK, the police, celebrities, or any politician. Our enemy is not flesh and blood. Remember this as we put on that full armor of God. Verse 10, a final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore. Put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Put on that full armor of God. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. This year has been incredibly difficult. It's been painful for many. It's been a year of paralyzing fear. It's been a year of financial tumult and loss. It's been a year where collateral damages from the measures taken may never be fully grasped by those who weren't directly impacted. And we have a divided country choosing between two broken, sinful men who are in need of a Savior. And that's not a commentary saying on whether or not I believe that they are saved, but just like us, they need a Savior. Whether or not they've accepted him is between them and God. But they need a Savior, we need a Savior. This year, it's been a trying time. We must work to live in peace as much as we possibly can. We must give grace abundantly to one another as we've received abundant grace from our Father. We must remember that people, people, flesh and blood people, are not our enemy. We must remember that in God's eternal kingdom, COVID-19, the 2020 election, the U.S. Supreme Court nomination and confirmation that just happened, and all the rest. It's just a vapor in the past when we think about it in eternity uh, mindset. What will truly matter is how much Jesus we showed to others. What will truly matter is, did we love as Christ loves? So as I leave you, I pray that you will seek God's face. I pray that you will repent and reconcile with anyone you've mistreated, disrespected, or downright hated during this season. Repent. Reconcile. Pray. The last few years, um, you could maybe even the last 10 years, we've heard a lot of Second Chronicles 7.14 bantered about. But we culturally seem to gloss over the first and most important parts. Before we get into the final passage of today's episode, Let's remember this promise to Israel in the Old Testament. And it's a promise that we should seek God's favor so that he might, in his grace, allow this promise to apply to us since we are grafted in to his people, Israel. God promises, promise Israel, then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, 
I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. Second Chronicles 7.14 So let's hear it one more time. See if you pick up the very key and most important pieces of this passage. Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. Humble ourselves. Then pray and seek God's face. In doing so, we turn away. Literally, repent is turning away from our wicked ways. And let's repent of our sin as a nation. And at that point, God's ear will bend towards us, and he will, through Jesus Christ, forgive our sins and heal our land. But only if we follow the procedure. Humble ourselves. Pray and seek God's face. Repent, turning away from our wicked ways and seeking his face. Then we can expect him to hear from heaven and forgive our sins and restore this land. Are we humbling ourselves? Are we praying and earnestly seeking God's face and earnestly repenting of this nation's evil? We can't gloss over the instructions God gives us and then expect him to keep his part of the bargain. Repent. Seek God's face in all things. And as we await the results of the election, whether they come out tomorrow, tomorrow night, next week, next month, next year, Whatever the results may be, as we await those, I leave you with this chapter. I know we hear it a lot at weddings, and I actually believe that in this time, in this day and age, it's actually, the context is more fitting for what we're talking about in this commentary. Here in this chapter, Paul is referring to our spiritual gifts. Paul, who we first meet at the stoning and martyrdom of Stephen, when he was then Saul of Tarsus, Paul, who by any human account was an enemy of Christians, the followers of the way. But Saul and later Paul was not the enemy. It was the evil rulers and authorities of the, un- of the unseen world. It was the mighty powers in this dark world. And it was the evil spirits in the heavenly places. See, God loved and saw purpose in Saul and gave us a shining example of how the enemy is not flesh and blood. And how anybody that is flesh and blood can be redeemed and can have eternal impacts. An eternal impact for the kingdom. Paul is one of the greatest examples in all time of of the redemptive power of Jesus Christ. And I have said, 10,000 years from now, it won't matter who you voted for. Whether you voted early or you're voting tomorrow, it won't matter what party you supported. It will matter how you love those around you. It will matter if you brought those in your life closer to Christ. It will matter how you loved. Love is the greatest. If I could speak the languages of all the angels but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, And if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is is not irritable. It keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless, but love will last forever. Now our knowledge is partial and incomplete, and even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the whole picture. But when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will become useless. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror. But then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete. But then I will know everything completely, just as God now knows me completely. Three things will last forever. Faith, 
hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. As this election cycle comes to an end, again, whether it's tomorrow night, the next night, the next week, the next month, or on into 2021, I truly believe that when we, those who call on Jesus as Savior, stand before the Holy God, and He judges us for how we lived, He will not ask, nor will He care, who we cast our ballots for in the 2020 election, or in the future in the 2024 election, or way back in the 2016 election, whenever it was, he's not going to care. He will care how you loved, whether you were Jesus to others, how you personally cared for the least of these. He's not going to care that you voted for the government to do that work, but he will care and does care if you do that work yourself. Pray, repent, seek God's face, pray some more. Then vote your conscience. Don't vote based on the schemes of the enemy. Vote based on what you truly believe God is telling you. Then love without equivocation those who vote and think differently than you. Three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. 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 May the peace of Jesus Christ, a peace that surpasses all understanding, bless you and your family. May his love be a place of refuge and inspiration for you. And may his love and mercy flow through you like a rushing river, giving life to all those you come into contact with. God bless you, your families, your workplaces, your churches, and may God bless this sinful, broken nation and her people. Until next time, this is Dave Ebert on the Gifts for Glory podcast, where we celebrate and promote men and women using their gifts for God's glory.